two, one. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you to the end of the day, our new America Winning Coalition broadcast brought to you every Monday night at 7.30 p.m. Well, what's happening at the end of this day? We have a lot to talk to you about, and I hope to be able to just wrap it all up within a 15-minute broadcast. Let's begin with loyalty. The word loyalty to the President of the United States of America. Unfortunately, we all have run into people who are not loyal to the President. There are some who are lawyers, there are some who are doctors, there are some who are regular Main Street USA people who will get upset over some particular issue that the President is addressing and suddenly they're abandoning him. Now, I could tell you, based on my travels throughout this country, that the overwhelming majority of the people across this land are not walking away from the President of the United States. In fact, I could tell you that his base is growing. But what is really troubling to me, what truly bothers me, is when a political office holder, like we had here, or have here, may I say, in New Jersey, stands up and votes on an issue, on a policy, on a bill designed to hurt the President of the United States. And we had this, this particular situation this past week in New Jersey. Senator Kip Bateman, a Republican in the state of New Jersey, voted with Democrats to take Donald Trump off the ballot in New Jersey if he did not turn in his income tax returns. How in the world does a Republican who was elected by Trump supporters with the belief that he would be supporting the President of the United States in a crucial vote like this, how does he turn his back not only on the President, but on the people of the state of New Jersey, the people who elected him to office? Now, I'm going to continue to take this senator to task. I'm going to continue to call him out. Now, I've met with several people around the state, both within and outside the New Jersey GOP. Many are leaders in the New Jersey GOP, and they are as disgusted as I am with regard to Senator Bateman's position, with regard to his vote against the President of the United States, who happens to be the leader of the Republican Party here in the United States of America. I ask these individuals, will they come out and will they at least say something that will put Mr. Bateman in his place? And their heads would go down and they say, well, you know, Steve, something we just can't do. Why can't you do that? Why can't you stand up like men and women and put this guy in his place? It's beyond me, folks. Look, I'm an elected official myself. I will not be an elected official come May of 2020. I believe in term limits, so therefore I'm leaving. But even while I'm in office, if you got something to say, say it. What are these people so afraid of? I don't know what they're afraid of. I can only conclude is that maybe they owe somebody something or, or maybe that, you know, that they don't want everybody to really know their opinions and thoughts. Well, I've got to tell you, and if I'm wrong, I will be proven wrong. I think people, you and me, and thousands and thousands of us are sick and tired of people who are not standing on their feet and telling it like it is. And this is precisely why President Trump is being criticized, because he is standing tall and standing firm. He's very transparent. They criticize him because he tells the truth. They criticize him because he says what he thinks and thinks what he says. Now, I've been asked to address the Bateman issue. I have by people within the GOP because they simply don't have the ability or the desire to put themselves on the firing line. I'll understand that. And then there are others who said, well, gee, when you address it, maybe you don't mention his name. Maybe you just use the term senator. Are you kidding me? What happened to courage, for goodness sakes? What happened to being a man and a woman standing on your convictions and your beliefs and the desire to do what is right for the people? Not everything should be for the party. What should be for the party is working within the framework of truth, of honor, of duty to country. That is what should be within the party. But that's the way it is. A woman uh, tweeted the other night when I tweeted out some issues regarding Senator Bateman's vote. Her question was, is Steve Rogers the only one in New Jersey, the only one in New Jersey standing up and fighting for the president of the United States? I must tell you, at times I feel that way, but I know I'm not the only one. I know there are tens of thousands of you 
who are standing up not only here in New Jersey, but in your states to fight the good fight of faith. Now, I wish, and I really do, I wish some people would stand up and, and, and do what's right and call these people out. I would tell you that there's another senator, uh, Senator Joe Panaccio, who stood up, a GOP senator, who did stand up, and he addressed this situation regarding the, uh, the vote to remove Donald Trump from office. And I give all credit and bravo to Senator Joe Panaccio of New Jersey because he said this was nothing more than a political stunt. But I wonder, why is it only Joe Panaccio who stands up and addresses this issue? The New Jersey state chairman, he stood up, he issued a press release, and he called out the Democrat Party, and he made it very clear that they were wrong and ill-advised to do what they did. That's fine. They're doing their job. But I'd like to see more people in government, in elected office, stand up and just tell Senator Kip Bateman that he does not, not at all, have any right to go after the president of the United States after the people who elected the president to office elected him to office. So here's what I think should be done. Because people have asked me, what do you do in, in a case like this? Guy's in office. Well, you make sure he's not in office next time around. You make sure he gets primaried. There are other things that we are working on that will hopefully ensure that he loses a primary. And if he gets into the general election, well, he should lose the general election. Now, I know a lot of people in the Republican Party are going to get upset. I'll get the calls. I'll have the meetings. Steve, calm down. You know, we got to be, be, be careful. We can't do this. Look, I live by the credo, speak no evil of other Republicans unless they speak evil of the president of the United States or of me. So we need to stand up, folks, and we need to know who is with us and we need to know who is against us. And Senator Kip Bateman is not with us. And let me add one more little caveat to this. The Democrat Socialist Party, and you know I've used the word socialist, not only here in New Jersey, but around the country, support a socialist agenda. That's why they're called the Democrat Socialist Party. Saying that anyone who supports the Democrats are supporting a socialist agenda. President Trump made it very clear at his State of the Union message, has made it clear from that day on until yesterday and today, and I know he'll make it clear in America, we will never become a socialist country. So how does a Republican senator in New Jersey, and perhaps there are others around the country who are watching this, how is it that they support the Democrats on certain issues going against the president of the United States? How is it that they can look at me or you in the eye and tell me, well, look, I don't support a socialist agenda. It's only this particular issue. Look, you can't play games with us anymore. You know, there's a biblical passage or a proverb I once read where God was uh, talking to the people. He said, look, you're either hot or cold. There's no lukewarm in this business. You're either with me or against me. You know, the days of playing politics with the people are over. You want to play politics with your minions and, 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 and those people who are obligated on bended knee to follow you and to do what you say, but don't go playing games with us. And you know what? I'm not alone. The president is not alone. The MAGA supporters are not alone. We are silent. I know we're silent, but everywhere I go, Thousands and thousands and thousands of people are backing the president of the United States of America. And here in New Jersey, I'll tell you something, there are tens of thousands. Look, there are those who say, and, you know, rightfully so, that, you know, the president did not win during the, uh, his election to the presidency. He did not win New Jersey. They're predicting he will not win here anymore, that he will not win in New Jersey. I believe in the impossibilities. I'm going to work hard, even if it's by one vote to see Donald J. Trump win New Jersey for the presidency of the United States. And people can laugh all they want, joke all they want. They did that, folks, throughout the entire 2016 presidential election. They laughed, they joked, they were prepared. I, I was there, folks, with the mainstream media ready to go on the air, with Fox ready to go on the air, preparing to usher in Hillary Clinton as president of the United States. And guess who's in the Oval Office? Nothing, nothing is impossible. So these Republicans that are turning their back on the president, 
thinking they're going to win uh, Democrat moderates, socialist moderates? Guess what? You may win them, but you're going to lose 10 times the base, the Republican base, not only in this state, but around the country, who will continue to support Donald J. Trump, our president of the United States. Now, let's talk about another issue this week that I was interviewed about on uh, Epoch Television News Network. That particular television news network is uh, something that's been aired on the Internet. Uh, 72 hours ago, I was interviewed, as I'm speaking to you now, it's reached over 102,000 views and climbing. Why on earth, how on earth, did 102,000 people view that video? I'll tell you how they did it. They decided to click a button, and they saw the video. I talked about Jeff, uh, Joshi, whatever his name is, uh, Josie Smollett, okay, from Chicago. Uh, this particular guy is the individual who said he was mugged, that he was beaten, that it was a racist attack, it was a bias attack. But what he said at the end of that part of his scenario was that these individuals who mugged him yelled out MAGA lives or some way connected MAGA supporters to their violent act and tried to tie in the President of the United States. Well, it ends up, because of the hard work of the Chicago Police Department, it ended up that this guy lied. That is exactly what did not happen. What's troubling is that when he made that statement about MAGA supporters, the mainstream media, Hollywood actors, oh boy, all of them, even Republicans, Republicans like the Batemans of the world, even Republicans jumped on the bandwagon and, 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 and tried to say, well, you know, this guy, uh, uh, Smollett, shouldn't have been attacked. Uh, maybe, maybe the uh, uh, scenario was, uh, was created and invented by these two people who mugged them because of the rhetoric of the President of the United States, because of the rhetoric uh, on TV of MAGA supporters. So I asked, I asked, show me one racial incident, one, in a MAGA rally. I've been to them, 10, 10 20, 30, 40, 50,000 people. Sure, there are people who get out of hand and maybe somebody punches somebody or someone tries to start a skirmish. But the President of the United States doesn't want, doesn't care for, and doesn't need violent acts at his rallies or anywhere else around the country by MAGA supporters. No riots, no civil disturbances, nothing of a sort. And yet, the mainstream media jumped on this act, this act, like they did with the Covington High School students at the Lincoln Memorial a few weeks ago, trying to really place blame, not on the individuals who committed the violent act, but on the President of the United States and MAGA supporters, which includes me, by the way. I am a Make America Great Again, proud Make America Great Again supporter of the President of the United States. So the Chicago Police Department had a real problem on their hands. They had a guy lying to them about an incident that occurred that didn't occur. And then they, they, got, they had the guy not only lying about the incident, but placing blame in part on a special group of people, specific group of people, MAGA supporters, which could have very well inflamed others to attack anyone, anyone expressing their support for the president of the United States or wearing a baseball cap with Trump on it. So my hat's off to the Chicago Police Department and the wonderful, compassionate, and passionate superintendent of police, who not only got to the bottom of this quickly, but was very transparent and brought it to the people, not only of his city and of his state, but people around the world, explaining to us exactly what happened. So what should happen to Smollett? What should happen to him? First of all, he should go to jail. He should go to jail. He should pay restitution for all the police overtime and all the money that was spent on the investigation. And he should apologize to President Trump and apologize to you and to me and MAGA supporters around the country. But of course he won't do that. They'd never do that. Apologize? Folks, when this broke, when the Chicago Police Department finally came out with the truth, Fox News and other TV networks, I think Epoch Times 
and, and others actually came out. One America News is one that I remember came out and aired what the superintendent said. And they also went on to discuss the facts related to the crime. MSNBC, I saw nothing, if anything, maybe one or two short reports. CNN, they're in outer space. They're, they're, they, they don't report on current things. They, they, they're, they're busy with the Mueller investigation. You know, surmising, uh, drawing conclusions based on nothing. Uh, so you get MSNBC and you get CNN and a few other of these mainstream uh, media broadcasters, they broadcast a lie, but they won't talk about the truth. That is why it's called fake news. That's why it's called manufactured news. So at the end of the day, with regard to Smollett, what do we find? He lied. What are we going to find? I'm hoping he goes to jail. Probably never happened. I hope he gets a heavy fine. Maybe it won't happen. Frankly, I don't know what they're going to do to him. But unless they make him an example of someone who committed a, a, a crime himself and committed an act of violence, of violence, folks, psychological violence, verbal violence against MAGA supporters and innocent people, unless they make an example of this individual, others are going to do the same thing. And it'll go on and on and on. With regard to the Senator Batemans of the world and those who uh, decide to vote against the best interest of the President of the United States, they're voting against the best interest of the country. They're voting against the best interest of the people. So what do we do about that? Well, I've shared with you that we are going to take some action with regard to him when he runs for office. But there's something else we can do. We could stand up and we could unite. We could come together. There are many of us now, thousands of us, right here under the tent of the American Winning Coalition. Other groups like the South Asian Republican Coalition and other groups coming on board. We're all coming together, folks, in one big, happy, powerful package. And these people are all Republicans, with the exception of a few hundred who are independents, and more independents are coming on board. And mark my words, as time goes on, as the Democrat conservatives begin to see the deep, deep slide of their party into socialism, they're going to be coming our way. So that's what we're doing, folks. We're coming under one big happy tent. And what I want to do and what I'm planning to do with many GOP organizations around the country, we're going to work together with them, with them to make sure that after we do our job, these individuals are going to have a home to go to. And it should be and will be, if the GOPs get in line with the president, should be the GOPs that are well established around the country. Not every GOP, I've learned, in this country is divided and has people who turn their back on their party, turn their back on the president. We got a lot of good ones. I could tell you, in New Jersey, I know the 21 county chairman here, best people in the world, believe me. And I'm not just saying that because it's a nice thing to say. If I've got something to say, I'm going to say it. All 21 county GOP men and women in this state of New Jersey are good American patriots. And I'm going to help them to the best of my ability get their national people elected to office. Why do I say national? The American Winning Coalition is committed 100 percent to federal elections, 100 percent to the President of the United States at this point. We want to make sure that President Donald Trump is reelected and with him comes Republicans in congressional districts across this country. We are working very, very hard, very hard with many, many people in the state of Florida now. I'll be going back there. I was there twice. We had two three-day tours and we're going back, folks. We're going to be going to North Carolina and Georgia within the next six months. And we're going to be going to Pennsylvania, a swing state, where we're going to be working very hard with the GOPs in those states, as well as the American Winning Coalition chapters in those states. So, do you want to have a voice? I mean, really, you want to have a voice? You really want uh, to do something that, that counts? Come on board. And you know what's good about coming on board with us? I'm not looking for your money. 
We don't want your contributions. I don't want your donations. But you know what I want? Your ideas. I would love for you to participate in some of the discussions we have over policy. There's a woman in Florida who I met. I will not mention her name now. She talked to me about the abortion issue, about what happened in New York. And then she said something to me that really caught my attention. She said, you know what we ought to do, Mr. Rogers? We ought to start talking about adoptions to beat those who are advocating abortion. We spend so much money and time and on fighting the policymakers with regard to abortion, and it seems like we just can't get it started because we have politicians who don't have the guts and the courage to stand up and to support those anti-abortion policies. So how about this? What if we support pro-adoption policies? Make it easier to adopt American kids in this country. Make it easier to adopt any child in this country. So you know what I asked her for? I asked her for this. I asked her to memorialize, to put in writing, folks, what your ideas are. And she sent it to me. And the neat thing about it is, she is an adopted child herself. So this is what the American Winning Coalition does. You would think that some political parties would be doing that. Nope, ain't happening. We're doing it. We're doing it, folks, and we're going to continue to do it. So at the end of the day, what we're going to do is what? We're going to get out and we're going to vote. We're going to encourage people to join us here at the American Winning Coalition broadcast every Monday night at 7.30 p.m., and we're going to pray. We're going to pray for our country. We're going to pray that God Almighty keeps the shadow of his wings over all of us who are supporting the President of the United States and the Make America Great Again agenda. And we're also going to pray for those opposed to us, that the good Lord opens their eyes and opens their hearts and their souls and their spirits to get them to realize that this country was not founded upon a socialist agenda. It was founded upon the Word of God, the Judeo-Christian values that our forefathers embraced. It was founded upon the Constitution of the United States of America. And you and I have a responsibility to make sure that at the end of this day, we stand upon God's Word and the words written in the Constitution of the United States. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. God bless you, and God bless America.